All right, I'll make this video here. Uh, dang, I forgot. I forgot who was requesting. I think it was it was Stephen that was requesting this, but we we'll go ahead and share this. Uh, quick and easy on some of the methods and some of the swinging techniques that I'm currently using, not what I used in the past. And so this is just a very similar setup that I was talking about before, 15 minute chart straight to the one minute, I mean straight to the one hour. Reason being is because a 15 minute chart, you can actually catch, you know, 50, 60, even 100 pips. And that is something that you wanna be doing, especially if you're scalping. Now, if you're, if you're used to scalping off the one minute and the five minute, Obviously, you're trying to do on a shorter time frame, and you're doing it more fast pace, and you want to just catch maybe five, ten pips. So now for gold here, I'm on gold here on the 15 minute chart, and I'm still bullish on gold, and so I still see gold to keep targeting even higher. And like I said, based on what I see on the 15 minute chart, okay. I'm going to mark it up. So let me mark it up here in the horizontal one. So I'm going to mark it up right here, this 1246 price. Okay, because it actually came back to come test it and it never came back to break this. And it came back up here. And it's coming back up here again. And I know this is a pretty important price range to pay attention to, especially where gold is going right now. So on the 15 minute chart, obviously is it is it the right time to buy? No, because if you bought it now, then you're holding a negative trade. Now if you were selling it, then yes. The question is when you're selling it, how much pips are you shooting for and how much profit you're trying to shoot for? I can't answer that for anybody that doesn't know how many pips they're trying to shoot for and how much profit they should take. I would give you an estimate like three to five pips or five to 10 pips. But if you get greedy on your own and you don't know how much profit you want to make and how much or what, what your goals are in, in Forex, that's on you. That's your own fault. Flat out. Anybody can make money in Forex. The question is how many people are actually being consistent and actually making the kind of money that they're at, that they want to make so that they can leave their job. Right, because that's the ultimate goal, right? Is to leave your job so you can do this full time or trade part time, make a full time income. So back to the 15 minute chart here for gold here. Obviously, at this point, would I buy? No, I would not. And so Tokyo sessions hasn't been open yet. Obviously, I would wait till Tokyo to open and then take a look within the first hour. And if you want to scalp. I said this plenty of times in my videos, I said this plenty of times in, on YouTube, is that the best times to scalp are the first two hours of each session. And the spreads are still high, so you kind of have to be, you have to pay attention to this, especially from 4 to 6 p.m. Central Time. From 4 p.m. to 5 p.m., right, the gold market is closed because the gold market opens right back at 5. And from 5 to 6, it's still Sydney sessions by itself. So when six o'clock hits, then Tokyo reop uh, Tokyo opens up its first hour. And that's when the best time you should start looking into the volatility. Sydney is colliding with uh, Tokyo. And that is when you should start looking into say, okay, where, how many pips I'm trying to cheat for? What's my profit goal for Tokyo sessions? Uh, if you don't have a profit goal, you know, you gotta have some kind of pip range or some kind of some kind of range of how much you're trying to shoot for. And so, but back here on the 15 minute chart, you know, things are, are just going really, really slow right now. And at this point, like I said, the question is how much are you trying to take profit at this point if you sell gold? To me, to me, I would probably just end up taking profit right around here like 1249, I don't know what is this, what do they have at? 1249, 
So I don't know, 1249, maybe exactly 1249. Uh, and if you really want to narrow it down, zoom in, move this up. We know it, it came back up here. And then move this right here. Now you have a specific price range when you want to take profit and when you want to re-enter again. And it's very important that you can narrow down with just two horizontal. Now, if you want to, if you want to do your swinging, hop into the one hour. If you're not familiar with the four hour, right? Because this one hour candle, right, is is breaking this structure here. And I'm looking for it to bull, to be a bull candle, a really bull can, a uh, strong bull candle, before Tokyo opens in 10 minutes here. To keep going, okay. And obviously, gold is not a, a, a really great pair to scalp, but there are, but especially during the first the first couple hours of each session, like Tokyo, London, especially London and in New York with the overlap of New York and London, it's, it's really awesome to, to scalp and, and do those and do position trading for gold. Gold pays a lot of money and for every penny that it moves, it's a pip. And so that's a difference when you, when you look at the currencies, that's very important. And if you are trading gold, so if I'm buying gold, guess what? I'm going to sell UCJPY. That's the uh, inverse correlation that I've seen so far. Com like that comes really, really close. Unless, like I said, unless gold has a has a lot of investors and buyers for gold, and that means there's no point wasting your time. So I'll see something else to look at. I do have a trend line set up here, but this is based off the weekly. So and like I said, based on the 15 minute chart, right? Based on the 15 minute chart, I have it set way high. So this was based on the daily I had set. So if I was, if I'm on USDJPY right now, I'm gonna highlight, by far this is the lowest price of, of the week. And I'm gonna highlight resistance. That's on the 15 minute chart, okay? We know this was the one that made it go all the way down to 112.2. So we know from 112.6 to 112.2, that's a 40 pip range. And at this time, it wants to come up. Okay. It wants to come up. Bullish candle, another one, and a third one. And if the other one, if the, if the fourth candle loses, loses I don't know what to say this um when it's run out of steam or when it's when it can't go up for uh when it cannot go even higher to come to come you know to come test this price 112.6 shorter back down so that would be that would be my way of interpreting this 15 minute chart I would go down right here and then I would put this and narrow it down right here. So it's like a 12, 11, 12 pit range, 112.55 from 112.43. And here is my target. And you can see that right now UCJ5 is losing. Okay. And it's stuck right here. It doesn't know what, what it wants to do. Obviously, I would I would put. You can do a, a a a pending order, but I don't like doing pending orders. If I'm gonna scalp, I go straight market orders on everything. And like I said, if I'm scalping or if I'm swinging, I don't put any stop losses on any of my trades. You all should know that by now. And if you put a stop loss on on a scalping position, I don't know why you would do it, but you would end up losing more money. So that is something that you should really be careful about if you're going to put stop losses after stop losses on every single position, which I do not recommend, but it's on you if you want to make that decision for yourself.
And so I don't like I said I don't recommend stop losses because I never use stop losses and and when you do use it, you and uh, trade like if you held an, a negative trade and they in reverse and it become positive and you had no stop losses, obviously that's that's one way of looking at it. But if you did a stop loss and you got and you got stopped out and then and you did another position again and you got stopped out again, you kept and if you keep getting stopped out, eventually your account is gonna is gonna get blown. And so that is another thing to pay attention to. Now a key point here, especially by using a 15 minute chart, is that you want to pay attention to the time frame here, is that we still have five minutes and pretty much under six minutes for this candle to make its decision where it wants to go. And like I said, we have five minutes until Tokyo opens. So obviously we're, we're going to see some kind of retracement. Maybe USDJ5 wants to test this 112.7, 112.65 area before coming down again based on 15 minute chart. And I like using the four hour chart for swinging because Looking at this four hour chart, I know I was talking about the 15 to the one hour. The 15 to the one hour lines up pretty close per price. Now, like I said, I don't want to make this like a long video. I want to make this as painless as possible for you to understand it for yourself. And that way you can hop in and see what you want to test out on. For yourself because based on the four hour obviously we can see you know we could see a lot of resistance right here at the very similar structure that caused it to go down same setup going down every candlestick structure repeats itself so I don't want to dive in too much about candlestick structure but every candlestick structure usually repeats history history repeats itself so that's, uh, that's one way I can simplify saying this and overall overall is it a long-term sell to me I'm still really bullish on the dollar so eventually UJ is going to end up going right back up to 114 and once it breaks 114 then we are going to test 115 then from there I'm all about 118 to 124 so that's a long term there but based on the four hour right so based on the four you can see very similar structure Right, this structure went down, this structure went down, right? Back to this one, went down. So that's three key candlestick structures that they repeated three times already, right? Pretty much almost all in the same month. Well, yeah, all, but in the same year, but all, yeah, back November, right? December. And we are coming up to the 19th. I mean, very similar price structure here. You gotta be very careful when prices come back to the same, to the same prices. Yeah, when the prices come back to the same prices, because if they do, it could very well, guess what? Come right back up again. Something that you have to pay attention to, especially if you are following candlesticks, in candlestick patterns and you and you put them because every candlestick has a trend right they give you a trend based on whatever the four hour daily weekly and monthly trend structure is very important if you're if you're if you're trying to swing you have to identify a trend structure where is the price at where was the previous price at and is it repeating the same structure because if it is guess what <clears throat> The only way, like I said, the only way I would sell USDJPY long term, if it actually, let me show the weekly chart. If it actually, actually comes all the way down to break 112 and come test 111, for me to reconsider this as a long term sell. Remember, there's a lot of structure here, so that gets confusing, right? And this structure was sitting there around 111. So it's very, very important to not get yourself caught up on a long-term setup. So, 
And I was showing this before that this similar structure can very well repeat itself. And that depends where this candle is going to go. If this candle actually just bears down like crazy and then engulfs everything, obviously I'm not going to waste my time buying it. Anymore. I would take the loss. But now I'm talking about swing long term. So I want to leave it at that because I don't want to I don't want to make it too long of a video. I made plenty of videos in the past. I talked a lot about scalping. I talked a lot about swinging and you know current situations that could happen and what are some possible outcomes if it doesn't go your way. And so and you know to be honest, you have to really define your own type of trading strategy behind this. You know, uh, I, like I said, I give I, the books there, my books there. There's plenty of books to read. There's plenty of files to look at. There's plenty of videos to look at. And ultimately, eventually you're gonna find something that's gonna work out for you. And if you stick with it for the long term, you know, you're gonna find that consistency instead of trying to be the guy that's trying to flip accounts every day or trying to flip forex every day you don't want to be that type of guy i used to be that type of guy it doesn't work out eventually you're gonna to have to start making income if you want if you want it if you if you want if you want this as a career to be honest if it's if you don't want it to be a career i don't care you can go ahead and make a, you can make i don't care how much you make in one day because if you're not withdrawing it, that's not income. That's the most easiest way I can say it. And so, and so, very important to you know pay attention to where, where, where to pay attention to your surroundings, have that self awareness. And okay, so right here, so you can see how this candle is just bolt bearing down. Why? because you can see the inverted hammer right here, the wick, wick, every wick can give you a clue. This wick right here, create a resistance, push down, wick, and then this one closed down. If you want to wait for confirmation, you can too. Resistance went down, resistance went down. And remember, if, if UCJ was not gonna test higher, Guess what's gonna test? Gonna test lower and lower and lower. I don't care if it has a massive pullback. The question is, can this massive pullback is the breaking point to to say, hey, we're gonna buy now? And you gotta understand false breakouts on that point. So I don't like I, I don't want to give a full tutorial on this. You're gonna have to figure this out on your own. And like I said, I, there's a lot of videos out there that I already put out. And so, but this is something to, you know, to really, really, to establish and reapply it and you practice it and then find something that works within that method that has not going to be exactly my method. It's going to be your own method because you see something that's working out for you. No one else can see it except you. That's the only way I can say it. So once once you see it perfect it move on to the next one and then and then now you're gonna have now you're gonna start combining your scalping entries your swinging entries when you want to take profit how long you want to hold this trade till you know open up different accounts for being consistent and high risk aggressive you know eventually like i said eventually you want to do a high risk aggressive trading account to where you want to make the big money to where you want to say you know what i can risk this kind of money i can risk this account because i built other accounts to establish myself so that's another way you got to have a portfolio along the way and you don't want to lose your portfolio of accounts that's the most important thing so that's like i said it's it's, it's too much to talk about all in one video but i hope this makes sense and test it out.